all. Welcome to some more grounding practice today. And boy, do we need it. Um, it's been a tough week, and today is a very um, intense day for a lot of people for a lot of different reasons. So, what you're going to need today for our grounding is you're going to want your journal or a pad of paper. And then, um, if you didn't download it last week, I'll put it in the description box down below, but download the feelings um, worksheet so that you can kind of figure out what you're feeling, that sort of thing. And then um, you can grab your essential oils because we'll do our little foot massage to start off with. And then if you have one, um, I don't have one, but if you have one, grab a stress ball or I have a large rock um, that's about as big as my, that I can hold, maybe if you have a baseball, something like that, that you can grip it. And then um, I've got an anchor. So I'm using a river rock from the Sierras as my anchor, but you can use any sort of object that you want that anchors you. Um, I don't know, maybe it's like a stuffed animal or maybe something, something that feels safe and something that anchors you to good things, good memories. So you're going to want that, or you can use um, the thinking putty if you've got thinking putty, or a, like I said, a um, stress ball. And we will get started. So maybe grabbing your um, how do you feel today sheet, or your if you have feelings flashcards, that sort of thing, and we'll. we'll We'll kind of we'll begin to ground ourselves and we'll do, give ourselves a, our little foot massage. So go ahead and grab your essential oils or any oil. You can use um, the olive oil. You can use coconut oil. You can use almond oil. You can whatever works for you. And go ahead and take a few drops of that. And we'll begin our nice foot massage. And put some on each foot and then go ahead and start at the ball of your foot and then working towards the arch of your foot and as you're doing that maybe recognizing any sensations going on in the body and recognizing that all of our nerve endings are all right here so again that helps to wake everything up maybe your toes are cold like mine my toes are always cold and recognizing that and then working back towards your heel. And then towards your ankle. And also maybe recognizing what your hands are like what your hands are feeling. Smooth skin or the oil. And then kind of up the shin and up the calf. Good, let's switch the feet. Take it to the other foot. And we'll start at the, the ball of the foot, the toe. And let's work towards the arch. And then working towards that heel. And that ankle. And then gently up that shin and calf. Good. Maybe sitting it up a little taller. Maybe rolling the shoulders out a little bit, rolling them forward a little bit, maybe giving a little crunch there, and then releasing that down, and lifting that up, and releasing that down, and maybe give a little twist to the side. As you're twisting, go ahead and inhale it here, and as you exhale, let's bring this back to center. Let's twist it to the other side. As we're here, inhale it deeply here. And as we exhale, let's bring this back to center. Drop the chin to chest. Go ahead and lift the head to center. And drop that chin to chest. And lift that head to center. Or lift that, the eyes to the sky. Good. And bring this back to center. So I wanted to, I, because um, I know what I'm hearing a lot right now is the feeling of out of control. So grab your feelings, grab your feelings chart, your, um, and, and look and see how you are feeling today. I'm going to use my, I love these um, feelings 
flashcards. So these are the other side. So maybe a little bit uncomfortable. Um, maybe a little bit quiet. And maybe sad. Maybe a little bit worried. And maybe a little bit frightened. So those are those are my feelings today. Those are my feelings at this moment of what's going on um, in my day. So go ahead on that sheet if you have it with you. Find out your feelings. And like I said last week, you can use markers, you can use colors, color that in. Find out how you are feeling today. It's a very, it's a really good exercise. Um, again, a grounding exercise. It's very good for that. So as we are processing through the out of controlness, I wanted to share with you, um, and I'm sure many of you have done this before, or maybe you haven't. Maybe this is totally new for you. So go ahead and grab your journal or your piece of paper, and you're going to draw a small circle. And then draw a bigger circle around that small circle. So it kind of, it looks like a donut right there. So in that small circle, I made it kind of small, but I'll do an arrow to it. In that small circle, these are, I'm going to write the things that I control. So that small circle, things that I control. Now the big circle, the things that others control. So there's the big circle. And then outside that circle, the things that God controls. So we've got the things that we control, the things that others control, and the things that God controls. So let's go through that. So things that you can control, things that I can control. I can control my attitude. I can control the, the um, information I choose to take in. I can control my words. And then you can go down to simple, like basic needs. I can control what I choose to eat. I can control what I choose to drink. I can control, um, even though it may not feel like it, I can control when I choose to sleep or when I choose to settle myself down at night. All right, so those are some, some, just a few of the things that I can control about myself. So now things that others control. Others control their actions. Others control their choices. Others control their words. Others control things that may eventually trickle down to you. So again, others control their own actions, they control their own choices, and they control their own words. And there are many other things that others control. If you have some, write that down in there. So then God controls, and it, again, it may not feel like it, but we're getting into that, the fake it till you make it thing. The, the, it, the more you practice it, the more that it will become part of who you are and the more that it will become part of your fabric and what you believe. So the things that God controls. And God controls the world. God controls everything. 
But remember, we as humans were given free will. So God cannot control our free will, if that makes sense. So God can control everything, but again, he gave us the, the gift of free will, so he cannot control us. We are not controlled by him. And that can go into all kinds of, in all kinds of theology. I'm just doing this to find out what we can control. So, so we've got that. So looking at this, how does that make you feel? So looking at the things that I can control, it makes, it makes me feel empowered and it makes me feel responsible. So I can be responsible for these things and I should be responsible for these things that I can control. So there's, so then things that others control. How does it make me feel when I look at things that others control? How does it make you feel when you look at that list of things that other, others control? It makes me feel fearful, especially with what's going on around us. Um, it makes me feel untrusting. It makes me anxious. But then it also, on the other hand, there are some um, people that I trust and there are some people that feel safe that I can be like, okay, I'm glad that that's in their control and I, it's not my circus. It's not my monkey, not my circus. They, can, they are in control of that. They can deal with that. And then how do I feel when I look at the God controls? I think when I look at what God controls, again, it, I still, I kind of go to the same thing of the other's control, so I think I'm still like anxiety, kind of not trusting. So I'm being completely honest, trying to figure that out. So recognizing, okay, this is how I feel, this is what I see, and this is, this is truth. So hopefully this is a good exercise for you to do today to list out things that you can control, list out the things that others can, can control and you cannot, and then list out the things that God controls and you cannot. So that's a, a great thing. So then we're going to do an exercise. You guys. And this is an exercise for managing the stress during the loss of control. So go ahead and grab your stress ball or your, your thing that's as big as your hand. And, um, and then, so this is going to represent like the stress and then your anchoring object, mine is a river rock, or yours can be whatever you want it to be, is the, it's my healing and calm object. So I'm going to hold the stress um, object in my dominant hand. So go ahead and hold that, my hand, my right hand. And you're going to squeeze hard, squeeze very hard. And imagine that all of the tension from your entire body, and this may even cause you to have a headache, it may cause you to feel dizzy, it may cause your hand cramp, but imagine all of the tension, all of the anxiety that we just talked about, others control, God control, all of that stuff, taking that and squeezing it into this, this stress area, squeezing it into this object, this stress ball, whatever this is, this and feel it like attached like a magnet and putting it all in there squeezing through that all the tension but also as we're holding it also as all of this is going there I'm still staying present I'm not allowing myself to dissociate and go into the stress I'm, I'm putting I'm staying present because I'm putting the stress here and I'm feeling it in my hand so holding this and then as soon as you think like, oh, it's all full, it's, it's all I have, release. And maybe just holding that in your palm. Let's inhale it deeply here. And exhaling it out. And inhaling it again. And exhaling it out. All right. So as we breathe, maybe as you're holding this, your stress object flat in your hand, 
some of it leaked back. So go ahead and grab that again. Grab that and squeeze it. And maybe there's some extra left over. Maybe there's some extra tension left over from what you didn't have, what you didn't know was there before, even after you were breathing. So squeeze again, squeeze it all into that object. Let it be like a magnet. Let it just go right through your body into that object and squeeze, 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 squeeze. And then release. And you may need to do this a few times. You may need to do this like four or five times and feel free to do that. Feel free to do it as many times as you need to. I'm gonna do it one more time. So I'm gonna wrap my hands again right there and I'm going to squeeze and any tension. Now I have tension up here. So I took the tension from my lower body. Now I'm gonna tension, take tension from my upper body and let it be like a magnet to that rock and squeeze into that. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Almost where my hand is cramping up. And then release. Let's inhale it here. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. So, in that, so what we're going to do now is this thing. It's like a sponge. It's full full of my stress, just like a sponge is full of water. It's like heavy and it's full of my stress. So I'm gonna put this down. And now I'm going to grab my calming object, my anchoring object, and I'm going to place it into my dominant hand. And I'm going to move that object around, kind of just feeling it in my hand. And it's smooth and it's very cool. Not like the other, the other rock was a pumice rock, a volcanic rock from out on the trail. This is smooth and this is cool. And I'm going to imagine that this object holds all of the calmness, all of the healing, all of the positive emotions, all clarity in its smoothness and its coolness and its just its borders. It's holding all of that. I'm going to allow that, instead of squeezing, I'm going to allow that to kind of move through. And your arm might be tired at this point, so if you need to put it down, like holding it down onto your knee, or hold, where, if you're at a table, holding it onto the table. But allowing now that to radiate the healing, radiate the hope, radiate the calmness into your body, into your mind, into every joint. So allowing that, because you had all of that stress and extra excess energy, and now that hand is tired holding that. Let's inhaling it deeply here. And exhale. And with each breath, we're kind of sucking more and more of that calmness. And this, think about this as, a, as an everlasting gobstopper. It's like an everlasting calmness, everlasting clarity, everlasting coolness and softness. So with each breath, we're allowing that to radiate down and then radiate further into our bodies. So again, let's inhale it deep and exhale and inhale. And exhale. And one more time, let's inhale. And exhale. And maybe just like with our tapping, you might be experiencing um, feelings, emotions, body sensations that you haven't felt before or that are unfamiliar or that you're like, why am I feeling like this when I'm just squeezing an object and then holding an object? And that is because, again, we're releasing a lot of anxiety, a lot of tension, a lot of pent up anxiety, a lot of pent up tension that you don't may not even realize is there. We have to look at the facts, guys. The facts are, is that we have been, we're coming out of quarantine, but we've been in quarantine. We've been in this pandemic, this pandemic trauma for almost three months now. And post-traumatic stress disorder, it's kind of, 
it needs to be more than one month so it it or more than six weeks so we're kind of we're past that six week mark so if you're feeling tension if you're feeling anxiety if you're feeling all of that out of control and you're like why 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 we're at that place where it's where it's starting to become part of your fabric and so these um, these exercises can help so much with keeping that at bay and keeping it under control until you can get to a place where maybe you can get to a therapist that's safe or um, find some other things that are working for you. I realized when I got done with this, I realized I was like, I just talked about negative feelings. So on that feeling sheet or your cards, um, they, don't, they don't all have to be negative, even if you're stressed out. Kind of look through it too and maybe find something that you're like, oh, I do feel this. Let's see. <laughs> this, it's a funny one. I do. I feel ants in my pants. And then um, I feel a little brave today. And a little safe. So go ahead and find a few of those, um, a few positives too. Or you could be like, I'm not hungry. <laughs> or um, I feel comfortable or blissful or curious. Curious is a good one too, a neutral one. So not just I, not just sitting in those negative, but also grab onto a few of those positive as well. So the more that you practice these things, the more that you practice these grounding techniques, the more that you will be able to recall the sense of calm and recall the sense of peace quickly. So maybe you can get that stress into that faster and you can get that peace into yourself and that calm into yourself more fa like faster as well so I encourage you today to try that grounding exercise and trying doing your this exercise before it so that you can recognize what feelings are you feeling and putting those feelings into that So thank you again for joining me today, and remember that you are seen, that you are heard, you are important, you are valuable, you have a voice, and you have a choice. Again, you can't control what others do or what others say, but you can control how you respond to that. You can control the information you choose to take in, and you can control the words that you choose to give away. And there's um, Yes. Be blessed today, be safe today, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.